Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Civil Engineering Academy. My name's Cody. Let's go ahead and get started. So today we have a hydraulics hydrology problem, and in particular, we're going to be talking about some flow through a weir. Uh, so here's what the question says: You are assigned to a project in which you must design a broad crested weir. Uh, the maximum discharge allowed is 150.06 cubic feet per second. Uh, using the picture below, find the effective weir length. The energy head upstream is three feet. So we see our four options there available to us in feet and units. And so uh, we see our weir and then we see some vertical dimensions on that guy. So uh, the first trick to this guy is finding which formula we need to use or we can use. Which one can we use? Uh, and we're going to find that on page 320 in the PE reference handbook. And so when you look on that page, you're going to find a formula that looks very similar to this. You're going to have Q. Uh, is equal to 2 over 3 times your CV value times your effective length uh, times the square root of 2 times G and then we have our energy head so HE and then that's going to be raised to the 3 halves power so uh, that's our formula that we can use we know all of these except CV uh, we know we're solving for our effective length we're given the flow rate uh, we're given the energy head um, and we're solving for the effective length. So that CV value is something that we need to solve for and you'll see it a little bit farther down in your uh, legend or basically when they call out the parts of the equation. Um, so the CV is going to be 0 0.602 uh, plus 0 0.075 times big H over little h. Okay, And so whenever you look on uh, that sketch that it gives you on 320, you'll notice that uh, this guy up here is our big H. This is our big H, and this guy is our little h. Well, given the uh, given the diagram, we know that the total height is 4.5 feet. We know that the uh, the the little h is 2.5 feet, and so we can kind of solve for this big H. It's going to be two feet. So by knowing that. Uh, we can plug that into our CV value and you end up with 0 0.662. All right, we're all caught up now, so let's solve for the LE now. And so when we do that, you're going to get LE is equal to your flow rate times 3 over 2 because the fraction flips over your CV times the square root of 2g times he to the 3 halves power and uh, and that's it so uh, that's kind of the first obstacle for this problem is can you reorganize your unknowns to fit what you're solving for and so that's exactly what we just did right there uh, so let's plug in our goodies that we know our Q is going to be, let's see, 150.06. Multiply that by the 3 halves there. And then we put that over our CV value, which is 0 0.662. And then we take the square root of gravity. So that gravity, by the way, this is a good number to memorize, is 32.2 feet per second squared. Uh, so I'm not going to write feet per second squared. I'm going to trust the units on this one for space. But I do recommend whenever you're taking the exam, write down your units so that way they jive uh, and you know that you're in the right units. So uh, the energy head, it's given to us in the problem. It's three feet. So we can do that there. Um, and then that's going to be raised to the three halves power. So whenever you plug this guy into your calculator, but hey, while I've got you here, if you've already enrolled in one of the review courses at civilengineeringacademy.com, keep it up. You can do this. If you're not enrolled, I encourage you to go to civilengineeringacademy.com to check out some awesome practice exams and resources to help you pass your FE or PE exams the first time. So the answer to this one is going to end up being 8.15 feet. And you'll notice we have some interesting choices here. None of them are 8.15. And uh, and so notice in the problem, our maximum discharge, this is a trick that they can do for you, is they'll give you, they'll kind of hint around the problem, the maximum discharge allowed. So 
uh, we need to solve for an effective length that's going to be less discharge than uh, than our maximum, right? It's self-explanatory there. So uh, it begs the question, would a smaller weir or a larger weir restrict more flow? The answer to that is a smaller weir. So uh, let's plug in eight. Let's plug in our answer eight, so B. Whenever you plug in eight into our original formula right here, you actually end up with 147.22 cubic feet per second. Okay, so let's try 8.25. Well, when you plug that one in, you end up with 151.83. So you can see how that 8.25 feet would allow way too much water, not way too much, but a little bit more water uh, through the weir, through the restriction, um, and ultimately it would be over our maximum allowed. So the answer to this one is B, because we had to use our engineering judgment and understand that a smaller weir is going to restrict more flow than a larger weir. So I hope this video helps and we'll catch you next time.